And the Spanish Prime Minister has once again denounced the Catalan referendum, saying it's something few people want and it's good for nobody. Earlier on Wednesday, Rajoy's government asked Catalan leaders to clarify if they declared independence. Catalan leaders, including its president, Carles Puigdemont, signed an independence document on Tuesday, but then suspended any announcements of secession to allow negotiations with Madrid. Let's talk more about that. I'm joined by Andrew Dowling from Cardiff in the UK. He's a senior lecturer in Catalan and Spanish history at Cardiff University. Andrew, good to have you with us. Uh, so Mariano Rajoy has been speaking. He says he's uh, open to dialogue, but he is resolute that the, uh, any idea of independence of, of Catalonia is illegal. So what can he offer uh, that will appease the Catalan government? OK, well, I think there's been a modest, if you want, de-escalation of tension in the past 24 hours, because, as you know, the Catalans didn't fully declare independence. They kind of left it in a state of suspended animation. And I think one of the things that Rajoy did mention today was opening the possibility of reforms to the Spanish constitution. So both sides, if you want, are still pretty hard line. But I think things aren't quite as bad as they were 24 hours ago. And both sides now have if you want the opportunity to try to see if there can be meaningful dialogue. I think things will kind of decline in tension a little bit for the next week or two. And then we will see if we both, if we have essentially the same positions in two, three weeks time, we may be back where we started. Rajoy also disputed the transparency of the referendum. He says um, that, uh, you know, he was referring to the very low turnout. Um, uh, he says that few Catalans want independence. Uh, so do you think that's the case? Is Carlos Puigdemont wrong when he says he has a mandate for independence? Well, I mean, this is part of the problem. It, it kind of depends who you ask and each side has their, their, own, their own interpretation of reality. So... The Catalans won a parliamentary, or the Catalan independence forces won a parliamentary election in Catalonia in September 2015, and pro-independence forces won 48% of the vote. Hence, they've got a majority in parliament. So, in a sense, that's where they claim their legitimacy lies to push for independence. The Spanish constitution says there is no possibility of independence within Spain. Spain will be always united. Hence, we see Rajoy referring to legality, whereas the Catalans claim a democratic argument. The problem is, if you've got a democratic argument and a legal argument, in one sense, it's a dialogue of the death. And I think that's what we've seen in the past 24 hours, where both sides are talking completely different languages. So Rajoy says the referendum is not a referendum. The Catalans said last night what we had a referendum and the people voted to leave Spain. So at present, they're not talking in the same terms to allow them to communicate properly. Mm. And that, it, that's a problem because uh, obviously um, all sides want the, the, the tensions and the political crisis to de-escalate, but Rajoy still has this um, threat at his disposal, this tool where he could consider invoking Article 155 and impose direct rule on Catalonia. Do you think that he's still considering that or is he backing away from that position? I think it's it's very much in his entree as a possibility. I think one of the things that has happened a lot in the past 24, 48 hours, there have been a lot of phone calls from senior figures in the European Union, senior European leaders, pleading, in a sense, for a de-escalation of the tension. And I think that's partly why um, the Catalans backed away from a clear unilateral declaration of independence, and partly why there's a degree of de-escalation from Madrid. So they haven't yet applied Article 155. They've sought clarification for the Catalans. And I think that's all to do with the, with the situation becoming increasingly an international and European problem where there's real pleas for both sides to de-escalate. Now, as, as I mentioned a couple of minutes ago, the problem is if nothing changes in the next two, three, four weeks, for example, if the Catalans don't feel Madrid has responded to meaningful dialogue or meaningful negotiations, then the Catalans, in a sense, will press the button for the independence declaration that was suspended to be in effect. And then we enter a new phase of escalation where obviously Madrid will then apply 155 um, and suspend the regional government of Catalonia. And then we enter another destable phase. But I do think we do have an opportunity now for two, three, probably four weeks 
for communication to be possible. The question is, are both sides prepared to take up that mantle and, and try and communicate and try, if you want, to speak each other's language?